So I know RGB lights are all the craze right now, and I get it, I love RGB lights too. I have quite a few of them in my own arsenal, but the reality is the majority of RGB lights that are available to us right now are all soft sources, and that can be limiting as a cinematographer. The reality is you just can't shape the light in the same way that you can with a good hard light source, something like this Godox S30 right here. That is why I'm so excited to share with you guys this kit that Godox sent to me for review. This right here is the Godox S30 focusing LED light. And in this kit, you get three of these little LED lights and a whole slew of accessories. Now, for those of you that don't know about these little lights, they're essentially little LED Leco Juniors. And if you don't know what that means, there is an old theater tungsten light called a Source 4 Leco. And those are amazing little spotlights that have framing shutters that allow you to shape the beam perfectly. And they just have way much more control than your average Fresnel light. Now here in LA, you can generally pick up an old Leco tungsten style light like that for anywhere between $100, $200. But I have gotten rid of all of my old hot lights. And when I saw that Godox had these available in LED, I was super excited to check them out. So I've actually really been wanting or maybe even needing a light like this since about February of this year. Back then I DP'd a little short film called The Podcast Ripper. And in that we were trying to recreate the Shatner eye light. If you don't know what that is, it pretty much originated back in Shatner's Star Trek days where he would just always randomly have this slash of light across his eyes. Now, if you don't have a focusing spotlight, something like these Godox S30s or, you know, those old Leco lights, then getting the Shatner eye light is very, very hard to do with just your normal Fresnel. It becomes very difficult to shape that light when only using barn doors and flags if it's not an actual focused beam of light and you have framing shutters. So this is what we managed to pull off with just a normal Fresnel. And as you can see, it's definitely not perfect, but we did what we could without having the proper fixture. But now I have it. With these S30s and the spotlight attachment that comes with this kit, my lighting options are going to be much more diverse. I'm so excited about these lights that I'm actually going to be doing a two-part series. So today's video is going to be a full breakdown of everything you get in this Godox S30 kit and basically just walking you through how you can use all these accessories. But then next week, I'm going to be showcasing this entire kit in an actual real world shoot. So I have some actors lined up, a little script that my wife is helping me write. We found this awesome location. The script is this little neo-noir scene, so it'll go good with hard lights like this if you're thinking of you know, something like Chinatown with that kind of hard lighting. And aside from your usual modifier, like flags and bounce and negative fill, you know, your normal grip stuff, I'm only going to be lighting with this light kit right here. I wanna go ahead and open up these cases and show you what all Godox includes in this awesome three-piece light kit. So first things first, let's get into this top case. It's strapped on with these buckle straps. And this is for the three aluminum light stands that Godox includes in the kit. You can see they have this kind of old school design uh, akin to the Lowell light stands, if you guys are familiar with those. But these are actually very, very much akin to my ICANN light stands, which actually run about $60 a pop. So it's pretty awesome that Godox includes three of these aluminum light stands in the kit. I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of them and I love stands that fold like this. Now let's get into the real treasure trove. So when we open this up, we see that there is uh, some padding right here protecting what's actually in the, in the case. But if we look here on the lid, we actually have little uh, zippered mesh pockets for our three heavy duty barn doors. Now, these are pretty awesome. They're very, very well built, as you can see. I like that they have little leaves like this. They're really durable. You can see that they're all metal, heavy duty. I love that they have these little clips on them right here. And these little clips are for holding gels or diffusions. But yeah, these are really, really well made, well built. So obviously I have one of the S30s on the stand right here. So that's where he would go. But you have, each of these have their own little slots. So you get three of the S30s 
This right here is the spotlight attachment. You can see that it comes in a really heavy duty padded lens case is really what this is. But you can see here, this is the 85 mil 2.8 spotlight attachment lens. We're gonna throw this on the light later on, but what I love about this one is that these all extend. So you have a lot of options here. This essentially is like a snoot or even akin to like a dado light. So it's pretty awesome what you can do with this. And again, we're gonna dive into this in a couple minutes. But I do wanna point out that the 85 mil is the one that comes standard with this Godox S30 kit, but also sold separately. Godox uh, has a 60 mil and a 100 mil available as well. You do get three very long power cables. What's cool about these cables is that they are super long, so no worries having to run them across the room and up a C-stand, so that's always nice. They have this little extra thing here to protect the other tools. And again, in here, you get three of these little pouches. In each one is your power cord, a little socket tool, which is used for adjusting the yoke on the lights, which is really cool that they include three of these. You get one USB plug and you get two D-taps a shorty and a longer one if you need a little extra reach. So Godox does provide you with plenty of power options. Now, one thing I wanna stop and talk about real quick regarding power. When you are using these S30 lights off of battery, meaning USB or DTAP as well apparently, you do lose half the wattage. So that is a little bit of an issue, you know, if you're trying to use the full 30 watts that each of these units can output, then you're gonna have to run power to the wall. Otherwise, if you're only running off of DTAP or a USB brick, you're only gonna be using about 15 watts of power. So just keep that in mind. But something I found out that when using the DTAP, it's actually still really, really bright. Um, Cause I'm generally, for now, I've only been using these with the Gobos or to get a nice little edge light and on battery power even all the way down at 10 percent i still had to drop scrims in there to bring it down godox also provides you with three sony mpf plates so if you have a lot of sony mpf l series batteries another cool little feature and they do have quarter 20 so you can throw them on a crab clamp okay now let's get into the really cool accessories what we have in here first up is you get a full set of scrims. You are gonna be needing these little scrims. You get a full single, a full double, a half double, a half single, and then you get a graduated scrim as well. So there's lots of cool options in here for cutting down the light. You can use these with or without the spotlight attachment. We have the gobo holder. So if you guys are familiar with those spotlight style lights, they do work well with gobos. So Godox provides you with this gobo holder and then they just give you a little kit of uh, six random gobos. So in my kit, it looks like I got some stars, some interesting designs, a straight up moon, some kind of a sparkle thing here, a fire and some other interesting kind of water splash. If you saw in my last YouTube video, I was using this water splash, but I was using some gels along with it. I have custom ordered my own gobos, which is something you can easily do. I got a Dog Times logo coming and also a Venetian's blind effect. And you'll see that we're using that in the real world shoot next week. If you're wondering about ordering gobos for your S30s, they are a standard size M as in Mary, and that's a 66 millimeter sized gobo. Godox also includes two full gel kits. The first one is your color temperature adjustment set, and that comes with all your different levels of plus or minus green, plus or minus magenta, as well as all the flavors of CTB and CTO. You'll notice that these lights are not bicolor. They are 5,600 Kelvin. Now I know nowadays not having a bicolor LED is kind of frowned upon, but I wanna remind everybody that when you're using an LED light like this, it actually is brighter if it is a non-bicolor LED light. With these little, you know, perfectly sized gels, it's not a problem at all. I showed you how the barn doors have the clips built into them to put these on. These are really simple to slide down into the spotlight attachment even. Then Godox also has this 
color effects uh, gel set and this is all your you know your more unique gels and there's a lot of fun ones in here and actually one of my favorites is straw which actually looks a lot better on skin tones versus something like CTO okay next up we have the shutters so these framing shutters right here this is actually what you would need to easily create that Shatner eye light and these work along with the spotlight projector attachment. I just think it's really cool that Godox includes all these accessories because most lighting companies, when they sell you a light kit, usually accessories like this, such as the shutters or the gobo holder or also the iris attachment, all of these things are usually sold separately. So I think it's really cool that Godox just provides all of it in one kit. Like, here you go, here's everything that you can do with this kit. You don't have to, you know, purchase anything additional. Here is our iris. And this works really well with the spotlight attachment as well because you can really focus and narrow your beam and um, do a lot of cool stuff with it. Do, you know, stuff that's really akin to those Leco lights or the Dado lights. In the front pocket here of our case, Godox has more goodies for us. There's actually two softbox kits inside of here. I just love that they provide you with all of these options. And in here you get not one, but two diffusions and a honeycomb grid for each softbox. First of all, you can see just, it is very compact, but it is a mighty little light. Um, you can see how nice the tension is on the yoke, but again, I love that Godox includes three of these socket tools so you can easily adjust the yoke over time to your liking. Um, you can see on the back here we have our power port and also where we can adjust our beam angle. What you'll see later on is you can go from six degrees all the way to 55 degrees on that beam angle. And over here is your, uh, your dimmer right here on the side. Um, and you can see in there, there's a huge Cobb LED light. Godox also has this on the, on the yoke here. And this is another, just another mounting option. Um, and clearly that's something Godox has shown with us in this kit. It is full of options. Something else here you can see, these are the vents up here on top. And on the bottom you have two fans. Let me get that out of the way so you can really check that out. So again, they're not bicolor lights, but like I said before, that just, assures that we have the maximum output we can get out of this lighting fixture, but also we have those gel kits that Godox included in the kit, so those are gonna come in super handy. So something you can see on the light here is that 10% is as low as it will dim, but what is cool about it is it does move up in 1% increments. So I actually really do like that. So you can go in 1% increments all the way up to 100. Uh, but you can't go any lower than 10%. And again, it's pretty dang bright, so that is where I say those scrims really come in handy uh, because I've been using it on 10%, even pulling only half the wattage off of a battery and still needing to drop in a double scrim to bring that 10% down. They're pretty powerful little lights. Okay, so now what I wanna do is we'll get to the meat and potatoes here. I have my Siconic Lightmaster Pro light meter. We're also going to be using the Cinemeter 2 and Light Spectrum Pro apps for poor man color meters so we can really check out the specs of what this light can do. Okay, so here we are. We're six feet away from the wall. Uh, we're at 10% and at the smallest beam angle of uh, six degrees. So it's almost an F11, it's uh, halfway to an F11, and it's 370 lux at six feet. That's only at 10% at the smallest beam angle of six degrees. So now if I crank this all the way up to 100%, 100% at the six degree beam angle, now we're looking at 2,700 lux, or an F22 split. So a 2,700 lux from six feet away at only six degree, at the six degree beam angle. Now if I spread it out, I'm gonna spread it out to 55 degrees. So there's the 55 degrees. It's really, really wide. That's what I mean, I love this little light. Okay, uh, this is 100%. Okay, 100% and so at the 55 degrees, we get a 700 lux and it's an F11 split. So you do lose about 2000 lux when, uh, you know, broadening that beam angle, you know, going from six degrees to 55 degrees. Let's go back down to 10%, 10% 
at uh, the 55 degree beam angle. And there we get 86 lux at an F4 split. So pretty interesting, the specs on that. Um, something else I wanna do is let's check the color rendering. Now again, this is a poor man's way of doing this. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you know that. So uh, the green index is about a four and the, the Kelvin reading is actually 5,900. I wanna show how easy it is to throw on this spotlight attachment. You take this bad boy and you just slide it down inside there and then you pull it back over. This spotlight attachment is a little heavier, so, uh, but as you can see, uh, the yoke does good with the tension. But again, uh, Godox does provide the socket tool, you know, over time, this will probably start loosening up because as you can see, it's, you know, quite the attachment and we don't even have it out all the way yet. Um, so as you can see, there's two different levels to this. It's really like a little snoot, you know, you can really get some action out of this. Each one has its own level, uh, just depends how far you want to go with it. Okay, so right out of the gate, you can see how uh, crazy of a perfect spotlight you can make with this spotlight projection attachment. Now again, this is only at 10%. I'm dimmed all the way down at 10%. And now you can see that when you have this on, uh, you can see how I softened up that circle because I was changing the beam angle, right? So when you go to the smallest beam angle of six degrees, it softens up your spotlight. But if you wanted to get it really sharp, um, it's just a matter of broadening your degree angle in the back. And now I'm wide open at 55 degrees beam angle, uh, still only at 10% here. Okay, so now I'm gonna start uh, pulling out this and you can see that's the first level and then we'll go the next level. So you can really get a little tiny, tiny circle. And again, we can defocus it uh, with our beam angle. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you can literally get a super, super, super small little light. This is a lot like what you can do with the little dado lights, okay? Okay, so now that we have the spotlight projector attachment on there, let's start playing with all the fun accessories. Because remember, you do have a lens on this and you can focus it just like you can a camera lens, right? So this is how you can get some really cool effects. You know, you, it it's all up to you, like where you put the lens in conjunction with where you set your beam angle. So if you wanted something really sharp and defined, well then you could do that. Or if you wanted something a way more abstract, you know, something like this. Uh, and then what brings it up another level is throwing in a gel on that. And then we just drop that in here. And it's pretty simple to just have color now in your shot. So next up, I wanna show you how easily you can recreate that Shatner highlight with these little framing shutters. Once you get those set, you can decide how blurry or defocused you want them to be, how you know fine-tuned, do you want it to be like a perfect little square? So if I dim this down to 10%, right? Now we're at 10%. And then if I'm in here and you know, now I'm, you know, uh, you know, obviously there would be other lights involved with this, and this was probably would be too hot on the actor's eyes. So this is where we can drop in our scrims and you would drop that down in there. Now we have, you know, we drop down our light by two full stops. And now it's not nearly as harsh on me. And uh, yeah, so you can imagine with other lights and everything, this would be very accented. And then you could even use the other two side shutters to get rid of all the spill on the side of my face. One last one to check out is the iris. Okay, so I have my iris on there and then you can see how tiny you can make it. Pretty awesome. Now again, this is like pinpoint, you could do very dado kind of style lighting and then we could take this out. Now again, I'm playing with my lens on this, you know, extending it, defocusing it, you know. So it's just like, how, how much could you do? Right there, perfectly tiny little dot. And then in the backside, I can soften it with my beam angle, make it more harsh with the beam angle. Look at that iris, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you can just, really control the light, really create some interesting looks. And then you could throw some gels in there. We'll drop that down in there. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what that is. 
and then we have some color going on there. So I really love that Godox includes so many awesome accessories in this S30 kit. The opportunity for creativity is endless, in my opinion, with this full kit. So if you're in a controlled environment where you don't have to battle the sun, I really do think that this S30 kit could cover you in most circumstances, especially if you have a little bit of grip gear to go along with it. So with that being said, be sure to tune in next week where I'll be showcasing this Godox S30 kit in a real world shoot, demonstrating how versatile this full kit really is. And we'll find out if you can in fact shoot a narrative scene using only these three lights. Hey, if you're a fan of the channel and like the support, there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first and easiest way is to just hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell so you get the latest videos as soon as they're dropped. But if you wanna go above and beyond that and be a part of a daily filmmaking conversation, then I invite you to join the Dog Times community over on Patreon. That is where once a week I release an exclusive members only video, breaking down projects, talking gear, and sharing real world experiences as a DIY indie filmmaker in Los Angeles. But my favorite part about the Patreon is the conversations happening over on Discord. That is where you will be connected with like-minded filmmakers and have instant access to learning ways to improve your own skills so you feel more confident about working on set as a professional. So welcome to the Dog Times community and I'll chat with you soon.